Is that on now? Thank you very much, Nick. I appreciate it very much. And uh, just uh, braver men. No braver man than I. We all have to be brave men and brave women if we want to bruise death. As much as I love exercise, and I apparently am a uh, night owl, uh, I've come to the conclusion that exercising well is worth about seven to ten years on my life. And staying thin is worth about seven to ten years. And not smoking is worth seven to ten years. Not being too anxious or addicted to anything is worth about seven to ten years. And sleeping, which I love to do too, is worth about seven to ten years. Nonetheless, with everything being done right, uh, it'll be difficult for most of us to live to a hundred years old. And the reason why is that death is knocking at our door. So today, this morning, when I watched uh, West Side Story, I thought of love and death. And I looked at it and said, only love can really defeat death. And a definition of love that I've come up with over the years is called lovers. L stands for loyalty. O stands for openness. V for value of trust. E, which is E for the those who can't uh, hear. E is empathy. R is respect. And S, stability of commitment. So over time, I realized that we are not yet open enough to ourselves of how many dying parts we have at 40 years old when most people are half dead. And that openness is part of love and gives us the strength to tackle these things earlier. I also realized after my 15th year here lecturing that each of us needs to brain print ourselves, know our weaknesses, and see if I can succeed more in getting all of you to do brain imaging on yourself the way that you would do a colonoscopy, a mammogram, a breast ultrasound, an MRI of your breast, a pap smear, a prostate exam, a, uh, what else, colonoscopy. And the reality is if we look around this room, I bet you that virtually all of you would say, I've done more checkups on my prostate, breast, cervix, colon, than I've done on my brain. And that's a fundamental imaging problem. The other thing I wanted to share with you is that we're going to be able to uh, image all the other parts of the body successfully in your practice. I don't have a PET scan in my practice. We use it a lot. I don't have an MRI in my practice. We use it a lot. I don't have a spiral CT in my practice for the lung. We use it a lot. I don't have an MRI for the pancreas in my practice. We use it a lot. Uh, we don't have a MRA to look at the brain, but we do have the ability to scan most of the brain's function and most of the body with a laptop, ultrasound laptop brain map. So I don't know if there's, oh, here's the slides. So let's go to the slides and, and give you that best review that we can. Silent disease is everywhere. So our first principle that all of you should know is that anti-aging medicine is now a type of Flexner, and let me just see if this works, yeah, there we go, a type of Flexner meaning, Flexner said medicine is quackery if it doesn't do a head-to-toe physical. I'm claiming we now can do a head-to-toe computerized physical in a new form of primary care with Star Trek-like computers, and I can find the mild cognitive declines that all of you are getting from 40 to 80 of attention, memory, speed, brain map electrophysiology, and I can find in anatomy huge numbers of cognitive declines. The reason why we want to, I mean physical declines, the only reason why we want them is you're only as young as your oldest part. Whether you're dying like Jim Fix of electrophysiology running, or you're dying like Mrs. Reeves of a, a lung cancer, or Mr. Jennings of a lung cancer, or you're dying in a shock by Mr. Russert, whatever you're dying of quickly, they have a serious missed organ. People are a missing disease because they're not scanning properly. And when we, what is the purpose of all this scanning? Well, the purpose of all the scanning for the brain is that we can come up with a natural pharmaceutical hormonal lifestyle drug system to repair. So most people as they get older are losing a lot of energy in the brain and they take caffeine. But they don't understand, what they're not getting, the older Americans, are that their thyroid de deficits could fix their brain depression. 
their DHEA deficits could fix their brain depression. Or if you're low in dopamine and you're on Effexor or you have Parkinson's, you're on Aldeprol or you're obese and you're on Tenuate, you could take testosterone or estrogen to the higher range. So this gives you a neuropsychiatric brain code to do what you want most, which is to have an abundant life brain as you get older. You don't want to just be fit, strong, but you want to be sharp. And still, the balancing of the brain prevents you from too much dopamine, makes you risky. So people who have lost a lot of money, people who have done drugs, people who have gotten venereal disease, people who have overdosed and gotten blood clots have taken too much testosterone, raising their dopamine. And so you need to know the pluses and benefits of the brain code. And we can do this with the four neurotransmitter systems. The cholinergic system is processing speed. Almost everyone in this room is losing brain quickness from 30 on. And there are ways to improve it with huperzine and choline. And I try to show, throw choline powder in my yogurt every morning. And we can cheat and use nicotine, but then you'll die of something else. All right? And so you can cheat. And you could cheat with the dopamine system. And you can use ecstasy or other types of amphetamines like Adderall if you have to do it. Or use anabolic steroids. So people are always manipulating their brain chemistry in an unaware fashion. And even 15 years of teaching the brain here, I'm still amazed how few people have done as many brain checkups as they've done breast checkups or colon checkups or prostate checkups.